Hey everybody, Ruffy Rock Rash here, and today I'm going to show you guys how to get a 400 plus damage Master Sword, as well as an 800 damage sword. So the 800 damage sword is not unbreakable, but the Master Sword that does 400 will be. So let's get started. So the first place that you want to go is you want to actually go up to Hyrule Castle, specifically Hyrule Sanctum, which is floating in the sky. So I'm going to go ahead and use this shrine to fast travel on up there, and I will show you where you need to go. Alright guys, you want to get to the entrance of Hyrule Castle first of all, and you just want to follow my lead, and I will lead you to a weapon that we need to collect for this to work. Alright, now that we're inside of Hyrule Castle, we want to go up these stairs right here. all the way up and then you want to go back here and you want to pick up the royal guard claymore all right so the first thing we're going to want to do is we're going to go on to say hi to an octorok somewhere over here by yunobo hq south cave and we're going to go ahead and we're going to pull out our claymore damage it and now we're going to want to go head over to that octorok Make sure before you get to the Octorok that you have none of your followers following you, because if they kill it, then you have to reload your save and start again. So, once we arrive at the Octorok, hi buddy, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna drop down a manual save. We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna drop our Claymore. Let him suck on it. He's going to buff it, he's going to spit it back out, and we got a durability up. Okay, that's not what we want, so we're going to go ahead and we're going to reload. Perfect, this is exactly what we want to see, so we want it to have critical hit. So, we're going to go ahead and we're going to kill this guy so we can use him during the next Blood Moon. And now we're going to want to go over here, just to the right, just to the left of Death Mountain Foothook Cave. So that's where we're going to go next. On the way over, I'm going to go ahead and damage my Claymore once, so that we can use another Octorok on it. There he is, I see him over here. So once we get over to the Octorok, we're going to pop another manual save. And we're going to go ahead and we're going to drop the Claymore in front of him. Let him suck it up. There we go, he buffed it again, and we're going to pick it up, and we got durability up this time. Not what we want, so now we're going to reload our save, and we're going to repeat this process over and over again until we get the attack up that we want, which is either 9 or 10, depending on preference, on how long you want to actually sit here. 10 is the max that you can get, and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to grind it out until I hit 10. Wow, okay. I got that pretty quick here. Okay. Now I'm gonna go ahead and shoot and kill him so that I can use him next Blood Moon. So now we have our attack up plus 10 Claymore. Go ahead and pop a save just in case so you don't have to do that again. So next thing that we're gonna need is we're gonna need a specific armor set is the Evil Spirit set. As you can see, it has a Disguise and Bone Weapon Proficiency Attack Boost. That is going to give us a 1.8 attack buff on Bone. So, the place to actually find these armor pieces are actually going to be in the Labyrinths. So, the first piece that you can get, you're going to want to go ahead and you're going to want to go to the... South Lomé Labyrinth, and you're going to want to go ahead and complete that. And once you've completed that, it's going to tell you to go into the Sky version of the Labyrinth. So you're going to go ahead and go and complete the Sky version. Then you want to go down into the Chasm of it. Once you get down into the Chasm, the Chasm only opens up after you beat both the Ground and the Sky Labyrinth. Once you've done that, it'll open up a Chasm here that you can go down to fight a boss. 
Once that boss is defeated, it will give you a armor piece for this set. And that also goes for all the other labyrinths in the game, both of the other ones. So you want to go ahead and complete all of these labyrinths in the game to get this full armor set. Once you have this armor set, you're going to want to go ahead and you're going to want to go out and look for a Molduga Jaw. So the place to get a Molduga Jaw is you're going to want to go to the desert over here. The most consistent place that I find Moldugas is I teleport to the Siwakama Shrine. It is going to save for me. I typically encounter Moldugas over here. Yep, there's a Molduga right there. Make sure to kill it, and now that he's dead, he will have a chance to draw a Molduga Jawbone. Which is exactly what we need. Did you drop a Jawbone? There it is, the Molduga Jaw. That is what you're looking for. Go ahead and collect everything else while you're here. Next, we're going to want to go ahead and we're going to want to fast travel. To the In Isa Shrine. Perfect. All right. Now what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to pull out our claymore. Drop your Molduga jawbone. And then you're going to want to fuse it to your Royal Guard claymore. You can see 74 damage. That is a lot of damage. Now what we're going to want to do is we're going to create another save. Just a backup save, just in case something goes wrong. And we're going to go ahead, and we're going to damage this claymore. Until it tells us that it's running low on durability. There we go. So now, now that we're low on durability, it's 148 damage. Go ahead and create another save. Perfect. Now that your extra save is made, what we're going to want to do is we're going to hit it twice more. Two more times. Until it is one hit away from breaking. Because this actually doubles its damage again. It doesn't actually show that it's doubled its damage again. But it has doubled its damage again. So, now that it's one hit from breaking, we're going to go ahead and save our game again. So, I'm going to go ahead and do some math for you guys, just to let you know how much damage we're actually doing right now. So, the Royal Guard Claymore does 32 damage, and we added 10 to it. That's 42. Then, we added the Molduga Jaw, which adds another 32. That gives us 74. We multiply that by 2 because of the damage boost, by getting it low on durability. Then we got it even lower, so now it's one shot from breaking, so that's another times two boost. That's 296. The armor set we're wearing gives us a 1.8 multiplier. That gives us 532.8 damage, which is insane, but we can actually push this even higher. What I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to drop a portable cooking pot. You don't have to use a portable cooking pot. You can use any cooking pot in the game. And what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to go ahead and take five mighty bananas, cook them up, and you can see we have now attack up. We're going to go ahead and we're going to go ahead and consume this. And now we have attack up, which gives us another... Times 1.5 modifier on top of everything. So now our sword is doing 799.2 damage. That is almost 800 damage. Now what we're going to want to do is we're going to go ahead and we're going to take this. We're going to take all of the modifiers and all of the damage that this sword is doing, and we're going to transfer it to the MSG Not Found Master Sword. If you don't know how to get this Master Sword, I made an amazing tutorial video on how to get it. I will link that down below. 
But if you already have it, you can go ahead and continue watching and following along, and I'm going to show you guys exactly how to f put this on this. So right outside the Inisa Shrine, there should be, yep, there's a guy here, and he should be holding... Oh, it's not this guy. I'll kill him anyways. It's... Yes, this guy down here. He is holding a long stick. We're going to go ahead and kill all these guys. And we're going to go ahead and we're going to yoink this guy's long stick. We're going to go ahead and we're going to duplicate the long stick twice so that we have three of them. If you guys don't know how to duplicate yet, in the same video of the Master Sword, I did show how to duplicate as well, uh, which is uh, linked down below still. Perfect, so now we have three long sticks. Amazing. So now we're going to go ahead and we're going to save our game. And now we're going to enter the shrine. Perfect, so now this part of the video I'm going to go ahead and show off is actually courtesy to Blaine's. I'm going to go ahead and link them in the description so that they have credit for showing this off, because this is actually what I'm going off of right now. Equip the leftmost stick. Drop, 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 equip, plus, plus, drop. And as you can see, you can't take that out here. That is exactly what we want. Once it says you can't take that out here, we're going to go ahead and we're going to pick up the Mulduga Hammer. And as you can see, your Master Sword is badly damaged. What we're going to want to do next is going to go to remove and equip again. And now it says your Master Sword is running low on energy. And now you can have a fast damage movement. As you can see here, your Master Sword is not actually low on energy. It just tells you that it's low on energy. It is unbreakable. So you now have a 400 damage Master Sword. And now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go ahead and show off the actual damage that it is doing. Perfect, now we're going to get on the back of this Lionel, as you can see. The Molduga Hammer, one cycles. A Lionel. A Silver Maned Lionel. And the Master Sword will two cycle it. So the Master Sword is doing 400 damage. While the Mulduga Hammer is doing 800 damage. So the Master Sword only does 400 damage, but is unbreakable. The Mulduga Hammer you should only be using when you get on the back of Lionels to one-cycle them. But yeah, that is how to get a 400 damage Master Sword. And how to get a 800 damage weapon.